All right, and welcome to the independent practice for lesson 14.2. We're talking about classifying these rational number, or the, I should say the real numbers. And I'll get started with the first one. Write all the names that apply to each number. So we're talking about the square root of uh, ne the opposite of the square root of nine. And well, the square root of nine is three. So what we're talking about is that ends up being negative three. And negative three is an integer. And if it's an integer, and we can see right here, if it's an integer, then it's a rational number and it's a real number. So uh, integer and rational and real is what we should be looking at for the answer. Next, number 15, 257. It looks like 257 is a whole number. And if it's a whole number, it's whole, integer, rational, real. All of them. And we have that right there. Whole, integer, rational, and real. Number 16, the square root of 50. Now, I do not, I know what the square root of 49 is. The square root, the square root of 49 is equal to seven. Uh, but the square root of 50, hmm. don't know that ends up being an irrational number right there. So it's irrational, but it's also real. So uh, I'm going to reveal that, irrational and real. <clears throat> eight and a half, for 17, eight and a half is right here. Eight and a half is a rational number, so it's rational and real. It's not an integer or a whole number. So that's what we're looking at. Right there, rational and real. And number 19. Oh, I didn't reveal. No, oh, I made a mistake on that one. That's rational and real. Square root of 16. The square root of 16 is equal to 4. So you got to keep your eye on that. Square root of 16 is equal to 4, and that's a whole number. So if it's a whole number, a whole number, then it's uh, integer, rational, and real. It's all of them. And it looks like I need to reveal another answer. Whole number, rational, and real. And uh, this one right here, 16.6. .6. Now, 16.6, .6, that is 16 and 6 tenths. There's your fraction, and that's why it's rational. And everything we're dealing with is going to be real. OK. So what we have in number 20 is identify the set of numbers that uh, best describes each situation. So, so the height of an airplane as it descends on an airport runway. So the height. So you got to think, well, what would a height be? It would be, let me bring it over here, or maybe maybe this way. Ah, I'm out of space here. Let me see. Um, so the height might be, a thousand feet. It could be 500 feet. Now you got to think, could it be in between? Could it be 999.9 feet? And it most certainly could be. Once I introduce that decimal in there, we're talking about rational numbers. And uh, so it's beyond the integers, beyond the whole numbers and the, in well, I don't think it could be an integer, actually. It, you know, it could be a negative number. But we could have decimals, fractions, and such. So I believe that would be rational and real. Oh, so, so real numbers. And Oh, yeah, and the high can be any number greater than zero. Yeah, so you could have, as worded as it would be, you could have the square root of 22 feet. And uh, so that's a weird thing, but yeah, it could be anything greater than zero. Uh, the score with respect to uh, par of several golfers. So just to let you know, par is, um, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if you have the T, this is the start. And then you're supposed to get the whole, uh, the ball and the cup. And they'll say, okay, from start, to cup, we're, we think you should do it in three strokes. That's called a par three. So if you did it in three strokes, your score would be zero. If you did it in, um, if you did it in 
one stroke, you know, you got a hole in one, that your score would be a two. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Ugh, I missed that up. If it's a par three and you did it in two strokes, then your score would be negative one. Yeah, your net score would be negative. You want your score to be negative because that means you're pretty darn good. If your score is positive, that means you did it over. So if it's a par three and you did it in five strokes, your score would be two because you did it two over par. So uh, your score would just be an integer, a positive or negative numbers. And uh, so, uh, yeah, integers, counting numbers, opposites and zero, okay? Um, we have this one here. Uh, Ronald states that the number 111th is not rational because when converted into a decimal, it does not terminate. Nathaniel says it's rational because it's a fraction. Well, it has to be, it's a fraction of integers. What is a rational number? It's a fraction of integers. Now, as a byproduct, those fraction of integers ends up being a terminating decimal or a repeating decimal. But here, it's it's definitely a rational number. Uh, yeah, it's a fraction. Uh, I mean, done deal. That's what I was just mentioning. And I think that this went okay. So we have that, and now we're going to move on to the second page, and we have uh, this here. Um, the circumference of a circle, circ circular region, is shown. What type of number best describes the diameter of the circle? Well, to answer that. What we need is um, we need a little bit of room here, not too much. And we have to think about, well, how do you get the circumference of a circle? The circumference is diameter times pi. And they're telling us right here that the circumference is pi. So instead of C for circumference, I'm going to type, uh, I'm going to type, I'm going to write in pi. So pi is equal to the diameter times pi. And the diameter has to be one. But to show you that, I could also divide both sides by pi. And pi divided by pi, anything divided by itself is 1. So 1 is the diameter. Uh, and 1 is a whole number. So looks like it'll be a whole number. Yeah, whole number because pi divided by pi is 1. A number, let's see, let me break this bigger here. A number is not an integer. What can it be? B. If it's not an integer, what type of number can it be? Boy, we have lots of choices here. It can be an irrational number that's not an integer or an irrational number. Oops. It can be a rational number that's not real. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah! It can be a rational number that's not an integer or an irrational number. So when we're looking at um, our chart of stuff so if it's not an integer so if it's not this here it could be out here the rational numbers or it could be the irrational numbers anything over here but it can't be a whole number okay uh, a grocery store has a shelf with half gallon containers of milk what type of number best represents the total number of gallons half containers. Uh, so that looks like it'd be rational numbers. Yeah. Because it's not just whole numbers. It's not integers. You can have half, 0.5. It'd be rational. Uh, explain the error. Katie said negative numbers are integers. What is her error? Oh, because she's, I mean, it's not just negative numbers, but I mean, you can't have negative decimals. Negative decimals aren't integers. So, uh, that's it. so the set of negative numbers is also includes non-integer rational numbers and irrational numbers. Yeah. So, oh yeah, you can have a negative square root. I mean, uh, negative numbers are integers, such as uh, well, something that doesn't fit that would be negative three point six. That's a negative number, but it's not an integer. Or negative the square root of twenty two. That's irrational. Okay. 27. 
can you ever use a calculator to determine if a number is rational or irrational? I don't think so. Because the calculator uh, automatically terminates. It won't tell you if the decimal goes on forever with a pattern that doesn't repeat. So, if the calculator shows a decimal that terminates in fewer digits than the than what the calculator screen allows, then you could tell that the number is rational. And that's right. If you, if the calculator is telling you, if you, if, if the display in the calculator says 3.18, then you know that it terminates right there and you know it's rational. That's what they're saying there. If not, you cannot tell. Yeah, and now this is where you cannot tell from the calculator display whether the number terminates because you see a limited number of digits. Yeah, the calculator screen only goes for so far and then it has to stop. It may be repeating, which is a rational number, or the non-terminating, non or a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal, which would make it irrational. Yeah, see beyond that display, you can't tell what it's doing. So yeah, only if it terminates inside the display. Draw conclusions. The decimal, 0 0.3 repeating represents one third. What type of number? 0 0.9 repeating, which is three times half. Ooh, yeah, that one's a good one. It is one whole. Huh, interesting. And uh, irrational numbers can never be precisely represented in decimal form. Why is this? Well, they aren't a fraction of integers. In decimal form, irrational numbers never terminate and never repeat. Therefore, no matter how many decimal places you include, the number will never be precisely represented. There are always more digits. And so there you go. That is the entire, uh, oh yeah, and I have lots of other stuff there, irrational numbers and so on. So that is what you got to know for this independent practice. I hope it's been helpful. Thanks for watching.